I'm Tony Maeda, and I would like to welcome you to a very special conversation with a very special guest, the incomparable Lucy Arnaz. <laughs> Lucy, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. We're going to talk about a, a series which is very special to so many Lucy fans out there, of course, the first season of The Lucy Show. And it's special for you, I believe, for a professional reason. Did you make your uh, professional <laughs> TV debut on the series? I did. I was 11, I think, if memory serves. And uh, I, was, I, was, it was, I had a couple lines. I played Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Cynthia and I was a soda jerk. Most people make their professional debuts in community theater. Summer Stock, when you're making your debut on the number one rated comedy well, on television. At, at our house, this was community theater. <laughs> This was family theater, you know, and the family worked over there. And, and if you were a, a shoemaker or a plumber and you had a design to sort of maybe go into that business, maybe your, your shoemaker father or your plumber uncle might take you to work one day and give you something to do, you know. And that was sort of their way of giving me something to do. Let's give her that, see if she's... Is that done. something you wanted to do? Did you push for that? I was 11! Who oh, no. knew? You didn't know? What I wanted to do. I wanted to date Ralph Hart. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I didn't know what date was, but I knew that I wanted to be with Ralph Hart. We heard some rumors about that. Oh, good kisser. <laughs> he was such a good kisser. Oh, my gosh. For a 12-year-old. Later on, compared to other people, maybe not so much. But at 12, under good. the bleachers. Good to know. Fabulous. Yeah, so I, I did that, that job, and then I got a little bit older. And in the next season or so, mm -hmm. I got a chance to do a couple more as Cynthia. See, Candy Moore played my mother's mm -hmm, daughter on mm -hmm. that show, and I was playing her friend. I was a girlfriend of Candy's, who was, um, Chris was her name. If I look at that now, I get hysterical because I had long hair, and I pulled my hair back into a ponytail. I remember when I had cut-off bangs, like mm -hmm. really sharp like that. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror in the makeup room just before I went on, and I thought, oh, I look like 16. <laughs> I looked like seven, you well, know. Well, they did have you playing older quite a bit when you were in there. I mean, you were 11. Because what 11-year-old would be working at <laughs> working, a soda shop? Working, that's true. I guess there'd be some shop. problems there, wasn't there? Yeah. Do you remember that first week of uh, filming? I know, I know you were. I know I'm putting you to the test. You were 10, 11. But can you, do you remember... Uh, uh, what the atmosphere was like? Was there a lot of excitement in the air? You know, I wish I could say that there that, that I remember that. I, 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 somewhere in my brain, I just remember being really nervous. Mm. You know, would I? Because I had to catch the the sodas mm -hmm. that a big long soda counter, and and she slid the yes. sodas all the way down, and I had to catch them and put them on the tray, and then, and that's all I thought about all week was not dropping the soda. Well, you, you knew know? your props. Was a big we rehearsed. Was a big, yes, I knew my yes. props. I rehearsed with props. my props. Made sure the glasses yeah. were not, you know, wet. Yes. <laughs> so it would have been really bad. You worked with them. And I had my little, I had to carry the sodas over mm -hmm. on the train, do my little lines to the, and it was, it was a small part, but I did it right. I did, did it well. What was it like to go to work with mom and then work wow, with that. mom? Was she mom on the set or was there a definite change and she was the boss? You know, she was the boss at home, too, so it was more like the boss at home, and then I went, oh, this is what she, that's why she's like this at home, because this is what she does. <laughs> this is her job. This is what she does. I, now I feel comfortable when I'm at home, because I realize that's who she is. Uh, she, both, you know, she mm -hmm. was a taskmaster mm -hmm. and a perfectionist and, and always right. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, if you're going to have somebody be a taskmaster and make you do things, at least make them be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she didn't, you know what, I think it was good though, because she didn't want it to ever seem like I gave this kid something to do and right. I, she's just going to be able to come in here and fool around. She made sure that whenever Desi and I were on the show, we gave us little parts that we were really, you know, professional. Doing and, something, yes. Yeah, and it was fun. It was really fun. The whole, the whole um, family on mm -hmm. that set was always just so much fun. You made a return appearance as Cynthia. Lucy is a chaperone. I did. That was really fun. That? I do. Yeah, it was a the whole group of kids and, and Viv and Lucy had to chaperone them all, Candy and mm -hmm. her, all her friends. And uh, I remember that they had all these really famous kids, like mm -hmm. teenagers who were famous that day. Eddie Hodges, who was yes. the original kid in Music Man on mm -hmm. Broadway. Mm -hmm. And Don Sons, Grady. Yes. Don Grady. Oh yeah, he was like the big hunk. <laughs> and they shot right next door. I remember mm -hmm, that. That's mm -hmm, why he was cool mm -hmm. having him on that. And um, I, and then that same week that we were that we did that, um, I had this running gag in the show, which was uh, was very Valley Girl. Look, even just doing that now, I think it's before there were Valley Girls. Mm -hmm. She was going, "No phone, I'll die. I'll really die." No phone, I'll die. I'll really die. <laughs> you know, it was like it's stupid. So. 
we had a Jello commercial that mm. Vivian and Candy Moore and I did that week. And I shot my first commercial that week for Jello pudding, pie filling. And they somehow they worked that line into it. Something about <laughs> no Jello pudding and pie filling. I'll die. I'll really die. Do you need residuals from those things? I never got paid. <laughs> See, that's the downside of that being is, that is. family. When it's person. your family business. Just use the kids. It. They're that's here. Exactly. It. That's no, exactly I didn't get it. paid. I don't get residuals. It's great schooling, mm. you know. And it, why not? No. They just. Why not? Well, I can think of a million reasons why not, well, actually. Now, think of, all, business, you know. think of all the really great actresses that studied really hard and were starving in Hollywood, sitting there going, uh-huh, good, fine. She got that part. That was a very specific school you were at, though. I mean, it, it was. was very, very good training. It was. Right? It was very, very good training. Yes. I had to unlearn a lot of stuff later on because not everything is like a three-camera film shoot. Sure, sure. You know, it's, it isn't always that you can't move while you talk. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't walk on the line. You know, that's not always true no, in other businesses. No, so you want, you break those habits. But um, it was great training, and the best the best training was the people that we worked with, the other guest mm -hmm. stars. That my, first of all, my mother's there, and and Vivian Vance is there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hello, Gail Gordon. They're like the three best actor people, mm -hmm. comedy, and believable, so believable all the time that if you didn't do what they were doing, you know, it would be very obvious very quickly that you're being fake. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you're, you're setting the bar very high when you work with those people. Well, let me ask you, you bring up Vivian Vance and Gail Gordon, and of course, one of the reasons this season is so special to, to Lucy fans is the great interplay between Lucy Carmichael and Vivian Bagley, between your mother and Vivian Vance. Obviously, it's almost like a continuation of I Love Lucy. Yeah. And uh, I know that Vivian Vance was a great mentor of yours, if that's oh, yeah. the right word. Can you tell us a little bit about what Vivian inspired in you and what Vivian suggested or counseled you with? Viv knew that I really enjoyed theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, working on my mother's show was just more theater. Mm -hmm. But when I would go home, I had a little stage in my backyard and I always was putting on plays. It wasn't, I never really thought about going into film. I wasn't where my heart was at somehow. I mean, my mother's show was filmed, but it felt like a theater right, piece to right. me. But we rehearsed it and, and we had yes, a studio audience and we adrenaline. did it from beginning to end. We didn't stop and do things out of context like mm -hmm. they do in movies. and one camera shows, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and when I picked my high school, because it had a great theater department, and and Vivian just always encouraged me to to keep doing that so that I could go there one day. And mm -hmm. even later, when we were on the Here's Lucy show, that's really when she began mentoring me, not just really? the Lucy show. But she would guest star on the Here's Lucy mm -hmm. show from time to time, and she would come and say, so what do you do on your hiatuses? You know, are you getting back to the theater? And I went, well, no, there are only, you know, four four weeks, something mm -hmm. like that. I usually just go on vacation somewhere. She goes, girl, <laughs> said, don't you get typecast as some sitcom performer all your life and never be able to get back on the stage. And I thought, what are you talking about? I mean, you're, you're you know, Ethel Mertz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. You're Ethel Mertz. You're yeah. Ethel Mertz, yeah. like for your whole life. Mm -hmm. I get it, I see. And wow. she came from the theater, you know, mm -hmm. Vivian came from doing dramatic parts as well as comedy parts. I found her doing Voice of the Turtle in San Diego, and she was absolutely right. So I did immediately, you know, started auditioning for Summer Stock and got into the theater again. And your mother relied a lot on Vivian's instincts, didn't she? Especially once your dad was off the series. Isn't her theatrical instinct absolutely. something that your mother respected greatly? Absolutely. And, well, she yeah. always said, you know, you could, you could throw anything at Viv and she'd, you know, hit it right back out of the mm -hmm. park. And always, again, just very believably, you know, you never saw Vivian playing for the joke, always. She always played the straight, well, she was supposed to be a straight man to my mother's comedy, but in comedy, everybody's a straight man, mm -hmm. if you do it right. Mm -hmm. none, of, none of it is, you know, ha, 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 here comes the joke. Good comedy. Yeah, good comedy. Good comedy. It's not yes, like that. Yes, yes. And, uh, and Viv was just brilliant about yes, that. You watch her, you learn everything, you know. Between the two of them, that's it. That's school. Wow, know? wow. When your father was executive producer, what was the atmosphere like on the set, if you remember, if you were there that first season, can you get any kind of feeling about it? I have a feeling it was loving family type relationship. Your stepfather was there too as well, wasn't he? He was, Gary, they, my mother was married to Gary Morton and, um, and Gary was there, not a lot, but he mm -hmm. would come down when they would do the shows and I, he did the warm ups, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And my father was still producing and so my father was on and off the set a lot. And it was strange, I, I wasn't in that show, so. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there all the time. I would come down to watch the tapings right. or like the one weeks, the couple of weeks that I was actually doing a part on the Cynthia, show. Yeah. But um, 
I, I kind of remember that it was it was strange to to have them be divorced and him still be there and mm -hmm. Gary being around. And I think after a while it just got a little too strange. Sure, you know? sure, yeah, yeah. But they were very professional about it always. And, and uh, my father really loved my mother and especially loved her talent and wanted to see that the next show got launched properly, right. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the one that bought the rights to that show, to I think it was... Um, Life Without George. Life Without yeah, George. I, I mean, my father, Desi Lu, put all the money behind Wildcat. Yes, yes. I just found that out. I didn't even know that was true. It was true. the backers, yes. The, the, in, back. the entire the backing world. for the Broadway show was Desi Lu, so... Well, you know, that in the love, even though he's not there physically, can really be seen, in, particularly in the first season. You, you, you get the sense of a loving launch of the series. And it's such a wonderful, as we said before, continuation of I Love Lucy in its own yeah. way. And then when you later on appeared um, in the later episodes, and then, of course, you were with your mother as a, as a supporting actress. And here's Lucy right. later on. Right. What was it like to go to work every day? I mean, she was your boss. She was the, she was the, she I, was the head. Oh my God. I just loved it. Yeah. I, oh, it was the best job ever. Mm. And I thought all of television was going to be like that. But yeah. you know, you go Monday morning, you don't have to be there till 10, you read, you have fabulous fun read, and then you read the next show and you meet all the guest stars, then you go to lunch. <laughs> and then you go down on the set and you block the show. And then, oh my God, it's six o'clock, we get to go home. Oh, That's yeah. fabulous. And then the next day you come in and you know, you do a little blocking and you get up on your feet. Mm -hmm. And the six o'clock time to go, Wednesday, same thing, cameras, and dress rehearsal, you go home. Thursday, cameras, dress rehearsal, big audience comes in, you do the show, they have a band, they play, they music, you take bows, everybody mm -hmm. laughing. You were at the restaurant by nine o'clock. <laughs> and then every four weeks, you got to take a vacation for like two weeks. It was the best job mm -hmm. I ever had, six years of just going to school, kind of and learning my craft and, and having fun and learn. I learned how to tap dance. I learned how to hula. I learned how to ride dressage because they would just shove these things that you, you're sure. going to do that next week. You know? well, there were a lot of musical numbers. We did like seven it. or eight musical numbers every single mm -hmm. year. So it was a little bit like being a musical theater One which you were in a pickle. Both of you were well, that was pickle. one of the smaller, easier musical numbers. <laughs> I like prefer to think of the large dance numbers. <laughs> yes, yes. You mentioned the orchestra. The show had an orchestra. The Lucy show. There was a, a live, live orchestra. band because that's a holdover from my dad as well. Right, he always had right. to have the orchestra on the I Love Lucy shows, even if they weren't in the show, would play for play the play out. Yeah, they, they, they would. They would be over there, and yeah. they would always play for the audiences and everything, just to. For the warm up and to keep people entertained during the show. Did you ever sing between? <clears throat> no, I wouldn't even get up and bow. You I mean, oh, as a kid, I was terrified. I was the most shy, bashful kid you ever saw. My brother oh. would stand right up when they would introduce us in the in the, in the bleachers in mm -hmm. the audience, and he would take this cute little bow, and then they would go, and my daughter, and I'd be gone. And it's like, <laughs> where'd she go? And I would be gone. I would be hiding under the seats. I would never. Really? Wow. Don't know what happened. I just. Uh, I didn't, my brother could play the drums when he was three, mm -hmm. you know? He could surf when he was four. I thought, I, I said, I have no talent. I can't do anything. I don't know how to do that. Oh. I don't have to play an instrument. I get, <laughs> so I thought you don't stand up to take a bow unless you do something. Mm -hmm. Why am I being introduced? I I'm still, done yet. still feel like that. Don't introduce me because I'm just your daughter. <laughs> you know, well, still gets you've me. Had, you've had an amazing career since then. Thank you. Know, you. Some wonderful, wonderful Thank work, you. Some wonderful Sometimes you just got to learn to crawl out from under the bleachers. It's pretty amazing to think about your heritage, your father, being a force in creating the three camera technique, studio audience. I mean, all this stuff, none of this done before I Love Lucy, and right. then carrying it through the years. Right. And how does it yeah. feel to be in that, that heritage with those two people who are such pioneers? Yeah, I, you, know? I, you know, I don't even know that that feeling is, t is something I can describe. It, because A, it didn't happen to me in midlife where suddenly I felt this way and then something happens and then you can really put your hands on a feeling because mm -hmm. it's, it's different from what you mm -hmm. were feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. When you grow up with something, that's just what is. It's, it's just are. what is. And um, so I don't, I don't have a moment when I remember thinking about it, except when I try to put it in perspective now, I'm, I'm just, what's, there's no word other than extraordinary pride yeah. that, that he was smart enough to say, I don't know, let's figure out how to do this. It's like, I don't know all the answers, but I know the right people to ask, you That's know, and I'm, and I'm a good leader mm -hmm. and, and I'm smart and I'm gonna ask all the right questions and I'm tenacious and I have a good sense of humor and I'm, I'm charming, I'm a good diplomat. Charming. They don't have to have all the no, answers. They just have to know how to organize things and make right. sure that you get where you need to go. You and know? have the people around them. And he hired the, the, best the best people. He just people, hired great people. people. And speaking of the best people, how about uh, any memories of your mother running running this, I mean, the first woman to run a major 
television. So actually, the first studio since Mary Pickford, and yeah. then you have Lucille Ball running Desi Lou, which was yeah, she hated tremendous. it. Did she really? Hate she it? hated it. She hated it. She really did, and she'll be the first to tell you. She would say, "I really, I hated it. I did not want to have to be responsible for all that." She fell into it. You know, mm-hmm. they bought mm-hmm. my father took his piece and left. She had to buy him out. Which happened during the Lucy show. It happened during the Lucy show. It was the right thing to do right. at the time. And he had hired all these brilliant mm-hmm. suits, mm-hmm. if you will, to run the joint. And she just really let them do it and trusted them. You know, there was a lot of very smart people to help her. Yeah. But still, the buck fell to her right. on certain big decisions. And she had to be the one to say yes or no. And she said yes for some really good stuff. Some really good stuff. <laughs> Star wanna... Trek, exactly. Mission Impossible, Manic. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, man. don't cut that. I, I like that show. Yeah, that's good. That was good. Keep it on. That I was really good. Money. And um, but but she didn't like the business end of it. She really just mm. wanted to go down there and be funny and do her show. She wanted to play. She wanted to. She, it was hard work just getting yeah, those scripts right every week. And that's what do you think? It drove my father nuts trying it's, to be the actor and the producer and the mm-hmm. studio head and the father and the husband. You know, something's got to give. It's really it's it's got to be pretty amazing when you think about the fact that she was running a studio and then she'd have to be on set and get some salts in her face or get locked in a vault with Gail Gordon. Then go to a stockholders meeting. Go to a stockholders meeting <laughs> exactly. And I just the the, the the dichotomy I think is fascinating to people. Yeah. Because, well, she was good at it. Yeah. So people, you know, say that the first woman to run it. She did it very well. She did it with grace and charm. She and certainly did. She's smart, but she didn't enjoy it. Mm. That wasn't what she wasn't would have, She wouldn't have chosen to do that. So mm. she said, don't, don't, don't give me too much credit for having done that because there's a lot of people who do it a lot better than, than I did. It makes people realize that anything is possible. I mean, look at, look at everything that she accomplished in her career and your mm. father as well. And look what they've left us. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't ever try to analyze how it went that way. It, the business end of it was that they got divorced and they mm-hmm. had enough I Love Lucy shows to just stop that one mm-hmm. and um, start another one. And she stopped that one when it was six seasons in. And mm-hmm. in those days, it was enough for syndication. So either I quit or I crank up another mm-hmm. one, you know, which is why Here's Lucy went on the air. And yeah. then there was six seasons of that. And she was like, all right, enough already. And then, yeah. then there was life with Lucy. And now there's afterlife with Lucy. <laughs> it's on Channel 9. <laughs> certain areas. Your mother um, had some superstitions. Uh, about working, and I think one of the most fascinating ones is about the character's name. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, she had to pick names, mm-hmm. and um, they picked Ricardo for Lucy Ricardo, mm-hmm. Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, and they picked it because she felt that her life turned around for the better once she married my father, and his name was Arnez, so they wanted the A-R. Mm-hmm. So they picked a name that had an A-R in it, and then the second series, she was Carmichael, and then the third, she was Carter. And even life with Lucy, what Barker. she was Barker. Barker, the AR. So the AR was always supposed to be very, very. Yeah. When she uh, met Carol Cook, didn't she suggest that Carol Cook change her name? Change to her Carol name. Of the Carol AR. with an E. Yeah. She wanted her to be a great comedian like Carol Lombard. Lombard. You, you know everything. <laughs> Your mother was a great friend of Carolyn Barnes. She, uh, she adored her. She had great respect for her as a comedian and as a person, and she loved her very much. And she was devastated when she was killed. Mm. And um, she even said that she had little visions. Little visions. Well, Carol is, came to her a few times. There's a yeah, isn't there a story about that? That's. Do you remember that story? Uh, just that she told her to go for it for television. The, yeah, that well, she, she didn't know whether to you know leave movies and go into this new little medium of television because was like, tacky, don't mm-hmm. do that, your career will be over. She went, what career? I'm queen of the bees. And that Carol Lombard appeared to her in a dream and said, go for it, kid, you know, something like that. And well, that's why she did it. I know I am, and I know everybody out there watching this is very grateful that your mother had that dream. That's and, right. And uh, made her make the leap into right. I Love Lucy and the Lucy show, which yeah. we're talking about right now. And here's Lucy. So thank you, you so too. much. You're absolutely welcome. For this. Thanks, this has Tony. been a great, great experience for me. It's fun. Personally. It's fun to remember all it those fun good. shows. It's, it's a good time. <laughs>